ravaged by AAA gaming, three challengers have risen from the ashes to offer the world a better path, each one offering their own unique character. Unreal Engine, the AAA titan that has offered its power to the indie world. Unity, the indie darling with the largest following. And Godot, the scrappy underdog armed with the power of open source. They have come forth to enter the arena and engage in an epic battle to see which game engine will reign supreme. The world must know which of these game engines will be the fastest. Hello, hello, hello. I am Axel Cannon and welcome to Stupid Game Experiments. Today is the day we have all been waiting for. Okay, maybe not all of us, but I'm really excited about it. In this video, I'm going to share the results of a speed test challenge I ran between the three most popular game engines, Unity, Unreal, and Godot. I'm going to give you a little spoiler here. There are some pretty shocking results for this challenge. But before we get into those, let me explain exactly what the challenge is. This challenge is based on the speed test challenge Dave's Garage is currently running against all the major programming languages. The code for the challenge is called a prime sieve. The idea is to create a program that can correctly find all the primes up to a given number in the fastest amount of time. Since this is often done in less than a millisecond, the program is run repeatedly for a few seconds, with the score being the number of times the program has run in that time frame. The higher the score, the faster the programming language. Dave originally ran the Prime C challenge back in March of 2021, comparing Python, C Sharp, and C++. Since those languages pretty closely line up with the languages used by Godot, Unity, and Unreal, I decided to run that same challenge myself back in May using the three different game engines. However, it didn't go quite as well as I had hoped. There were a couple of different issues with that test. The first of which was that I was limited in time and couldn't figure out how to create the test in GD Script in that small amount of time. I ended up just writing some simple code that it was easy for me to reproduce in all three game engines and using that for the test instead. But obviously, that's not where the story ends. Dave put his original code up on GitHub, and his video became so popular that other people started adding their own versions in different programming languages. One of those programming languages just happened to be GD Script. When I saw that, I knew I had to rerun the test so I could fix the problems I had with the first test. So that's what I did. It didn't all go perfectly, but I'll run you through my implementations and show you where some of the problems came in. Also, for this test, I decided to make the projects for all three game engines publicly available on GitHub, just like Dave's. So you can feel free to download them and try them out for yourself. Or you can even try to improve upon them, or even add other game engines if you want to. On the topic of game engines, we should go over some of the caveats that apply to this project that are specifically relevant to game engines. The most obvious caveat is that this challenge only tests the speed of the game engine's programming language that runs on the CPU. However, unlike most other programs, the limiting factor of a game is often what's being run on the video card or GPU and not what's running on the CPU. This challenge won't test that, so it won't provide a definitive answer to which game engine is truly fastest. I guess I'm just going to have to come up with more challenges to get a more thorough comparison of the different game engines. If you have any ideas on what those challenges should be, I'd love to hear them down in the comments. A second caveat is the programming languages I'm using for each of the game engines. All three game engines support multiple programming languages. For this test, I'm using what I call the primary language of each engine. I go into more detail about what I mean by that in this previous video, but basically, the primary language is the programming language that most people will use most of the time with that game engine. Here's a list of the languages that I'll be using for each of the engines. This has some consequences for this challenge because these aren't necessarily the fastest languages each engine can support. For example, Godot's second most used language is probably C Sharp, which would almost certainly provide faster results than GD Script. Similarly, Unreal Engine's base language is C++, which would also provide much faster results than Blueprint. Because of these alternatives, this test likely won't even be the fastest CPU performance each game engine is capable of. Rather, this is more of a starting point for the performance people will see from each engine using their primary programming languages. In addition to the GPU test mentioned earlier, I also want to run at least two additional programming language tests. 
The first would do a comparison of the visual scripting languages of all three engines. Since I'm already doing blueprints for Unreal Engine in this test, I do C++ in Unreal Engine for that test. The second test that I want to run is doing the test in C Sharp in all three game engines, since I think that would provide an interesting side-by-side -side benchmark of all three engines running the same language. One last quick caveat worth mentioning is that Unreal Engine and Godot both have major version releases coming out in the next year. This is a pretty basic program, so it's likely that the new releases won't have any effect on the results, but it is something to look out for. There are probably other caveats to this challenge worth mentioning, so if you have something you want to add, go ahead and put it in the comments below. While you're down there, if you want to see all of these future challenges, take a moment to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss out. For now, let's take a look at the implementation of the Prime Sieve in each game engine. For all three game engines, I decided to implement the code inside a data object class. In game engines, data object classes are sort of like game object classes, except they don't exist in the world. I used the data object class because I knew all three engines had a version of them, and because I wasn't sure if putting the code in a game object class would affect the result. To be honest, it probably shouldn't have had any effect since all three cases use blocking code, but I figured better safe than sorry. For Unity and Godot, I used modified versions of the code found in Dave's GitHub repo. In both cases, most of the modification was adapting the code to fit into the data object format. However, I also ran into a bug in the Godot code. I found that I had to initialize the entire pool byte array prior to running the code, or I got really weird results. For Unreal Engine, I had to basically create the program from scratch in Blueprints, but I was able to work out what to do by piecing together the code from the other two versions. I tried using the C++ code as well, but the data classes in Unreal Engine Blueprints don't align exactly with what is available in C++. I'll talk a little bit more about the Unreal Engine implementation after I show the results, because they'll help explain some of the choices I made. In addition to the base program, I also created a GUI for the program in each engine as well. I probably could have created each one so that it would run in the command line, but since I was using a game engine, I figured I might as well take advantage of the added functionality. This was actually kind of a nightmare. That topic is going to get a video all its own, but I will say the Unity system for creating anything beyond a basic button is absolutely atrocious. I'm assuming Unity agrees with me because they just released a new UI system. Unfortunately, I couldn't get it to work with the 2020 LTS version I was using and was forced to use the legacy system. There's actually still a bug in the Unity version where part of the UI extends beyond its borders, but it was functional enough to run the test and I was sick of dealing with it. As you can see, I've set up the program to allow you to choose what number you want to search for primes up to and how many seconds you want to run the challenge for. The results will then be shown over here in the results table. This allows you to run the challenge multiple times as there can be minor variances in the results. In this challenge, I'm going to do a search for primes up to 100,000 and then let it run for five seconds. I'll run the code 10 times for each engine to give a more complete picture of the results. I'm going to show Unity and Godot first because those were pretty straightforward. Then we'll talk about the adventure that was Unreal Engine. So first up, let's take a look at Unity. As you can see, Unity comes in at a little over 11,000 in each of its runs. Obviously, this means that each run took less than a millisecond to do, which allowed Unity to stay pretty close to the five second cutoff. As a side note, Unity was the only engine that gave me the actual time with greater than a millisecond precision. It's probably possible to do in the other engines, but it's not super important, so I didn't spend time trying to figure it out. Those results came from a compiled version of the game. In my previous video, I didn't compile out the game before running the results, and it was rightly pointed out to me in the comments that running the game in the engine would affect performance. However, I think it's still worth knowing the difference in performance between running in the engine versus running your compiled game. So here's the same game run in the engine. As you can see, in Unity's case, there's almost no performance hit running this code in the engine. My guess is that this is because Unity compiles all the code each time it's updated, so there's not much difference in what is being run in this situation. It'll be interesting to see if this changes with future challenges involving rendering and actors in the scene. That being said, these numbers have limited usefulness without something to compare them to. So let's take a look at Godot. As you can see, there's a pretty significant performance drop between GDScript and Godot and C Sharp and Unity. GDScript's performance comes in at right around 8% of that of C Sharp's. Having a performance drop between the two languages 
isn't really that surprising because of the differences in the languages. However, I am kind of surprised by the magnitude of the difference. GDScript also sees a bit more of a performance hit when being run in the editor, dropping a little over 10%. So that's Unity and Godot. Some of those results were a little surprising, but not completely out of the realm of what could be expected. Now we move on to Unreal Engine. Before I show you these results, I have to give a little warning. These initial results are not the final answer, so stick around because there's some twists and turns to this little adventure that dramatically change the results. Now that you've been warned, here are my initial results for Unreal Engine. As you can see, they are a tenth of even GD Script's low number and less than 1% of Unity's performance. This is frankly shocking for so many reasons. First, Unreal Engine's underlying programming language is C++, which is faster than Unity's C Sharp. Blueprints does add a layer that would cause a performance hit, but this is beyond all expectation. Second, Unreal Engine is a game engine used for developing AAA games, including Fortnite. I just don't see a hundredfold performance hit being something they would be willing to accept. So I dug out the profiler and I tried to figure out what the problem was. I found some interesting results that require their own video to go over. However, while these did lead to changes that did produce some performance boosts, they came nowhere near close enough to make up for the hundredfold deficit. Unable to come up with an answer, I decided I was just going to have to ship it and move on. However, the package size of an Unreal Engine project using the default settings is pretty large. And since this was a pretty minimal project, I decided it would be worthwhile to see how small I could get the package size. Again, all the details of doing that is a topic for another video. However, in the process of going through the packaging settings, I found this little option. Basically, what Blueprint nativization does is it compiles the Blueprint code down as much as it can to native C++. I kind of just assumed that this is what happens all the time, but apparently this feature is disabled by default. So I turned it on and reran the results. And holy crap, that was a massive change. It literally got 55 times more iterations in the same amount of time. That is a massive boost in performance. And for the life of me, I cannot figure out why this option is disabled by default. The only thing I can think of is that the goal of the default packaging options seems to be those that are least likely to break your game. It does this by basically making no optimizations whatsoever in terms of file size or performance. Personally, having games run 55 times slower by default doesn't seem like a design choice I would make. But on the bright side, at least it can be fixed simply by changing an option. So there we have it. In this first test, Unity C Sharp runs about twice as fast as Unreal Engine's blueprints and Godot's GD script runs about 8% and 17% as fast as each of those respectively. For comparison's sake, I went and looked at the original video on Dave's Garage, and as you can see, not only did C++ do much better than C Sharp, but GD script actually did much better relative to C Sharp compared to Python. This leads me to two main takeaways from this test. First, when it comes to programming languages, there is generally a trade-off between usability and performance. Blueprints in Unreal Engine is able to get around this somewhat when it nativizes the code. This is how it is able to go from running a tenth of the speed of GD script to running five and a half times faster. This brings me to the second main takeaway, which is one of the main caveats I started this video with. More testing is definitely needed. Not only does each game engine have additional programming language options, but there are definitely other aspects of the game engines that will have a direct impact on the performance of a game. This topic is absolutely going to need further discussion and investigation. So let me know in the comments what you thought of the test and what other tests you'd like to see in the future. While you're down there, take a minute to hit that like button and help feed the YouTube algorithm and ensure that other game devs are able to see this video as well. Also, if you want to be sure to see the results of these future tests, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That's all for this video. I found this whole topic fascinating and I'm looking forward to running future tests. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.